Assalamu alaikum. We're continuing today with Allah's name, Ar Rahman. I'll start with a verse from Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaitan ir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ar Rahman. Allam al Quran. خلق الإنسان علمه البيان. You know, Allah tells us that He created us and taught us the Quran. But He mentions here in this surah, in this chapter, first He taught us the Quran. Ar Rahman علم القرآن. Yes. The Rahman taught the Quran. And then, Khalaq al Insan. And then he created Insan, everyone. And then, Allamu al Bayan. And then he taught us the Bayan, the clarification of what is in the Quran. He also told us that he sent prophets. And he sent books with the prophets. And because he sent the Quran, beginning with his name, Bismillah ir Rahman ir Rahim, immediately after his name, Allah, comes a Rahman ir Rahim. And this is a sign to us when we say this, beginning every surah. We know that he did not send any prophet other than Rahmatan Lil Alameen. Specifically, Prophet Muhammad, who brought the Quran, Allah said, Wama arsalaka illa Rahmatan Lil Alameen. We didn't send you other than a mercy to all the worlds. Alameen, yes, worlds. <laughs> it's not just us here. There are many worlds, and as we know, they're discovering whatever they say they're discovering. I, I don't really, I just believe in the words of Allah. If he says alameen, it's alameen. And is there knowledge? You know, the root is here is ilm. Is there knowledge in other places other than what we have? Well, <laughs> who is it? Um, it's called Elon, yeah, Elon Musk. He believes so. There are people already reserving their flights up and above where we are right now. They want to go somewhere else. Well, we'll see about that if, um, if it's a successful journey or not. So let us just realize that we were created with the fitra. We have a fitra, that means an instinct that we believe that Allah is one. And then as we get a little older, Prophet Muhammad said when we, when we begin to speak, our parents change us to other belief systems. So our fitra comes from our testifying, la ilaha illallah, before we were created in our human bodies. Allah can do this. <laughs> he did create us after all, so he can decide when he's going to send us down to the earth in our human bodies. But before that, we actually testified. We testified to his Rahmah, because his Rahmah is absolute. It's called in Arabic, mutlaq. It's a sifat mutlaq. It's an absolute, as is Rahim absolute. So the Rahmah is the mercy and the Rahim is the ongoing distributing it so that we can appreciate who is Allah. The reason we were created was to know about Allah. He wanted to be known and so he gave us the Quran in which are his names and attributes. Asma'a Allah al-Husna. And he tells us 
that we can call upon him by Allah or Rahman, Aynama Tad'u, Fallahu al Asmal Husna. No matter who you call upon, some people say, well, well, can we say Ya Rahman? Yes, of course you can. Because he is Allah, and it's the same meaning. Now, we are free to choose or not. There's no compulsion in Islam. But if you are a Muslim, by the very fact that you know a Rahman or Rahim, and you know that Allah wants us to show his signs within us, we require to show mercy. Yes, all of us are required to show mercy because Allah in his mercy has shown us who he is. Now, Allah's mercy is ongoing to everyone everywhere. But the mercy that is our right as Allah's creation is given to everyone. Yes, even to disbelievers. Allah gives them mercy so that they can go on living a life. You know, some people bombed the Muslim lands and, and they actually killed elderly and women and children and then they discovered own, <laughs> there, were, there were no uh, weapons of mass destruction, but it still goes on. And those men, I call them loosely, the term, uh, are allowed by Allah to keep on living and enjoying their lives, their homes, their children, delicious food and drink, luxury cars, and they're very old. And some might wonder, well, well, well how, how are they going to be punished? Or will they even be punished? Only Allah knows. Because our end is very important. Actually, in Islam, we are judged by how we finish in this world. So we always have to be aware that if we get too smug and we think, oh, we're all that right now, well, how are you going to end up? Are you going to be led astray in the last part of your life? Could be. So we have to always be aware to show mercy as Allah has shown us mercy. And if we do show that mercy, we can be sure that we're going to... It's okay, I'm 75, it doesn't make a real big difference. It, it's okay that we are going to know for sure that we're gonna get it here and in the hereafter. But the disbelievers will only get it here. Because if they die in a state of disbelief, and that's the key here, you have a chance until you die to repent. Because Allah is a tawab, meaning he loves the repenters. He loves people who repent to him. So Allah's Rahman, we said it's absolute. How can he be Rahim if he's not Rahman? Rahim is absolute. So this is a promise that Allah, by his name, Rahman Rahim, is all mercy. And he will show it throughout the world forever. But sometimes you're not, you're not aware of what exactly mercy is. You might think mercy, oh, I'm being punished. Where's the mercy? Well, that's the mercy because some of us need a punishment in order to understand what's happening in our lives. So when we know this, you should not delay entering his mercy. You should not just say, oh, well, he said he's merciful, so I'm all good. No, wait. Are you showing mercy to others? Are you a compassionate person? Or are you a judgmental person? You can say, are you a rough, heartless person? <laughs> you have to use the scale of Prophet Muhammad because Prophet Muhammad never, never was rough to anyone. Even those who tormented him, we know this from the seerah 
when we read some of the things that broke, broke his tooth, throwing rocks at him and throwing uh, animal guts on him while he's praying. And did he lash out and strike back? No, because we only care about our dawah. La ilaha illallah. We don't care about ourselves. We're not going to fight for ourselves. As a matter of fact, Prophet Muhammad said, don't fight for any reason. Not your country, not your tribe, not your wealth, not your relatives. Fight for the words of Allah to be known. So as long as Dawa is allowed, here I am. I'm an American. Nobody's stopping me. Nobody's stopping me in Egypt. Nobody's stopping me in America. I can teach you. The problem comes when people take a stance against Islam and they take it in such a fashion that they prevent the words of Allah from being known. So Allah wants to be known and he will be known because he is Al-Qahar. He's the one that's going to win. So we have to make sure we're on the right side and we should not delay in believing in Allah because we don't know when our time will come when we will no longer be here on this earth. Sudden death is a sign of Alamat when the world is coming to an end. Sudden death and violence will increase rapidly. And I think that is what is happening. I mean, I don't think anyone could um, deny that. So remember, our father is Adam. He was the first human, and he was, rec he was created by the Rahman al-Rahim to show that Allah is Rahman. Didn't he disobey while knowing he deliberately disobeyed? And for that reason, he was pushed out of the paradise. But then Allah forgave him because Allah is Rahman, all merciful. Rahim, showing his mercy. In the next lesson, we're going to do a, um, a specific example having to do with Prophet Suleiman. I promised I'd be quick, so we're going to wait till the next lesson. And inshallah, you'll come back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.